أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters and guests I want you to imagine yourself as a giant just a picture of yourself but as a giant I want you to imagine yourself as a giant elephant and not only are you a giant elephant but you're a giant elephant in the circus and there's this little chain around your foot that since you were a child you were trained and you were taught that if a chain is put around your foot you will be unable to escape and so for years as a child you tried to break the chain and you weren't able to do it until you grew older and you thought that you were helpless and that you couldn't do anything dear brothers and sisters just like this elephant has the power it is a giant indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you the power to make a difference when Allah Azza created Adam and he was planning to create Adam he spoke to the angels and said inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that I'm placing a khalifa on the earth. The angel said in response, قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءِ They said, are you going to place on this earth a creation that's going to make facade, going to corrupt things, a nation, a, a creation that is going to shed blood? What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in response? Allah Azza wa said, قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that I know what you don't know. That from this creation, from Adam alayhi salam, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you karam, gave you nobility through your iman, through your amal salih. Allah Azza wa Jal raised the status of the human beings. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala testifies that the human by the time that you're a loser, that you're a loser unless that you're a loser unless you have iman, that you are a loser unless you have amal salih until you have the righteous deeds. Dear brothers and sisters, information comes to us through our head. Through our head we get the information. But if we're not practicing, if it doesn't enter our heart, if it doesn't change our lives, then it is ilm. Indeed it is ilm. But it's ilm that brings no benefit. And the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa' Oh Allah, protect me from knowledge that brings no benefit. That is knowledge that we hear in our ears. Maybe we see it with our eyes, but it doesn't enter our hearts. We hear about patience, and then as soon as we leave an event, we're back to fighting with our spouses. We hear about shukr, but truly are we thankful for the ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us in our wealth, thankful in action. This is knowledge that reaches the body. Knowledge that reaches the body. Dear brothers and sisters, I want to remind you that you are a giant and that you come from giants. You come from people who took this message of Islam, gharibah. They took it. It was strange to the people. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, surrounded by the leaders of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum. And they went, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the battle of the trench, when there was a huge rock that they weren't able to break, they called the strongest amongst them who was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, we can't break this rock. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he smashed it. A fire came out from the rock and he said, Allahu Akbar. He said, Allahu Akbar, I have been given the keys of Persia. And I noticed some of the speakers up here, they are from Persia. And the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah gave me the keys to Persia. Then he hit it again, a fire came out. He said, Allahu Akbar, I have been given the keys to Asham. 
and he hit it a third time. Allahu Akbar. I've been given the keys to Yemen. All these countries, you know them to be Muslim. They were not Muslim at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. The Munafiqoon, and this is not the quality of the believers. They said, and Allah Azzawajal recorded, that what the Prophet ﷺ was speaking about, they responded by saying, مَا وَعَدَنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا they said that Allah and His Messenger promised, not, promised us nothing except delusion. They were pessimistic. They didn't see the future. And they had the position of the munafiqoon. But the Prophet ﷺ said, Wallahi, by Allah, Allah will fulfill this message. He will fulfill the message. There will not be any home. Baytu madarin wala wabar any type of home, whether it's made out of mud or this or that, they will hear about Islam. They will hear the message. Now the question is, will you be a leader? And that's even rhetorical because everybody's a leader. The Prophet ﷺ said, Kullukum rahin, every single one of you, Kullukum, every one of you is a shepherd. Every one of you is leading a flock. Not only are you leading them, but you're going to stand in front of Allah Azzawajal and He said, what did you do with the flock that I entrusted you with? Every one of you will be questioned about your flock. How did you leave? How did you lead them? And did you fulfill your amanah to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? Were you true to this gift of Islam that Allah Azzawajal gave you? Now there are many leadership qualities, but the one quality that if you have it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of the rest. That is ikhlas, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are sincere in your da'wah, and this is what I was thinking just before coming up here, Ibrahim alayhi salam was told to call the people for hajj. How many people are going for hajj? Raise your hand if you're going for hajj inshallah. Okay. أَذِّمْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ Call the people to Hajj. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said, Ya Rabbi, my Lord, how can my voice reach so many people? It sounds like an impossible mission. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it's not up to you to make sure that it enters the heart and it reaches the people. It's up to you to give the message, to do the balagh. And so Ibrahim alayhi salam, he stood up on Mount Arafah and he said, Ya ayyuhan nas, inna Allah katab alaykum al-hajj, fahijju. That, O oh people, O oh mankind, Allah has made hajj fard upon you. So perform the hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, wa adhin fi nasi bil hajj, yaatuka nijala. وعلى كل ضامن يأتينا من كل فج عميق. Allah سبحانه وتعالى says, call the people to Hajj. يأتوك رجالا. They will come to you walking for Hajj. Every year people go for Hajj walking. And if you, okay, I won't talk. In Saudi Arabia, they block people at the borders. And I know there's some Saudis here in the audience. My apologies. They block people at the border, so what happens is that the hajjaj that don't have visas to go for hajj, they go to hajj walking. They go through the mountains, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will come to hajj walking. You can't stop the hajjaj. They will come one way or the other. Sincerity, dear brothers and sisters. Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one of the sweetest stories was Umar when he was in the 18th year of hijrah. The Muslims were in a famine in Medina. The Muslims were in a famine. And Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, what he did is that he forbade himself from eating foods that the Muslims didn't have. And so he was forbidding himself because the Muslims were hungry and in need and they were, they were hurting. And so Umar radiallahu anhu's son, he had a piece of sweet fruit, watermelon or some sweet fruit. And Umar radiallahu anhu, he took it out of the mouth of his child. And the boy started crying and he went to his mother. And his mother said to Umar radiallahu anhu, her husband, she said, it's halal. He bought it with his own money, this is halal for him. Umar radiallahu anhu said, 
how can how can my children eat something when the children of Ummat Muhammad don't have food to eat? Wallahi, this will not be part of what I am asked about on the day of resurrection. This was the sincerity of Umar radiallahu anhu. And I can keep going on and on about this issue of sincerity. In conclusion, inshallah ta'ala, I wanted to share with you some good news. Some good news. Would you like to hear it? Sorry, do you want to hear it? Al Maghrib Institute is a da'wah project that I started in, um, in North America. Alhamdulillah, Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed us with tawfiq in the USA and in Canada. And we become the largest educational, higher education institute in North America with over 8,000 students and in over 15 cities across the USA, such as New York, LA, Toronto, and all 15 different cities in the USA and Canada. Alhamdulillah. Let us join forces in spreading this message of Islam. And the day the Muslims unify in action is a day for all Muslims to be happy.